Well, hello, hello, and welcome, welcome everyone else again to another exciting episode. This is Liz Story, your host, and today I have a truly, truly gift for you because I've been going after this expert for a long time, by the way, and finally she's joining us, so I'm really excited about it, and her name is Joanne Musa, and she's known as the Tax Lean Lady. Um, so we can let her jump in and tell us a little bit about her background because by the way, it's very impressive. Uh, she's been doing this for a little bit more than 10 years. Is that correct, Joanne? Yeah, it's actually almost, almost 15 years. <laughs> <gasps> 15 years. There you go. That's even better. <laughs> and, uh, it's, she has a really impressive background, by the way. Anyone who's watching us through the YouTube channel that I have or through my podcast, um, Joanna's going to be sharing with us quite a few tips about how to get started and hopefully what to watch, right? Because when it comes to doing any kind of investments, we need to go, we need to know the pros and cons. That's really what it comes down to. And, um, well, we have an expert here in the show. So Joanne, this is your show and you're the spotlight. So please jump in to just explain a little bit to the audience. What's your background? What made you get into all of this? I mean, cause it's, it's phenomenal by the way. <laughs> Well, thank you, Liz. Uh, you know, thank you for inviting me here. Um, I'm glad I was finally able to make it. Yes. And how I'll, I will tell you right now, and I will tell your audience, I don't have a background in real estate. Um, I have uh, flipped a couple of houses and been a real estate investor, but only in the last few years. When I started this, I didn't know anything about real estate. The only house that I had purchased was a condo that I had bought in um, 1989. And uh, then the bottom fell out of the market and we had negative equity <laughs> for years until we were finally able to sell it. And then once we were finally able to sell that kind of, now when we moved in, I had a new baby. I had a brand new baby. And then two weeks after we moved in, my husband oh, lost his job. Oh, oh no. So um, it, it, fortunately, we were able to refinance and um, consolidate our, our debt and refinance before, uh, before that happened. And, um, and, and then... Uh, it was a long time before that we had equity in our home and could sell. Now, by the time we could sell 12 years later, I had three growing boys in a two bedroom condo. Wow, that's <laughs> was, incredible. You know, there were five of us, my husband and I and the three boys. So, uh, but when we sold as soon as we could in 2001, now the prices, real estate prices are starting to go up. That's right. Um, we wanted to buy another house. We wanted to buy a house in that same area, okay. but um, we couldn't. We couldn't find one that we could afford. And not only couldn't we find a house to buy, we couldn't even find a house to rent <laughs> in that area. The, there wasn't much on the market, and prices were go starting to go up. Uh, so we rented for a while. My parents owned a house where in the town that I grew up in and uh, we rented there for a while and while we did I, I thought well if we can't take this money and we we um you know had accumulated some debt so we took some of that money and paid down our debt and the rest of the money I thought well if we can't buy a house um I'm going to invest this money I'm going to put it in an investment but you know what I didn't really have enough for the typical investments and um, so I thought uh, stock options <laughs> were the way to go, right? <laughs> so I started it, I, investing because you need a little bit of money. You could do it from home, from your computer, mm -hmm, and it's a right. way to leverage your money. Well, I, I, made, a little, I made some money, and then I, I, lost, I lost it all. <laughs> so, okay, wait a minute. Stop there for a second, John. This is really funny. So you made some money, but you lost it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens is with stock options, you're betting on the market's going to go up or the market's going to go down. And you're buying an option to either buy or sell that stock. 
And so you could buy it with a little bit of money. It's kind of like um, buying, uh, having an option to buy real estate. You put a little, a little option fee down and then you can buy that real estate in a certain period of time. Uh, well, it's, it, it's, um, it's sort of like that. You're, you're buying the option, either a put or a call betting on whether the stock is going to go up or go down. So if the market is going up or the market is going down, you can make money. Mm, I see. Uh, but these things also expire. Oh. So, but if the market gets really crazy, like it did in 2002, 2001, 2002, the market started going crazy. Right. Um, it, then it's hard, to, or if it flatlines and doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't then you happen. really don't make any money. And like I said, these things expire. So after a certain amount of time, if it doesn't, if it doesn't go up, you're going to lose money. So I lost the money I made. <laughs> and then I, 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 I thought there had to be a better way, a safer way to invest. And I needed that money to grow quickly. I had learned about tax liens in a couple of books that I read. I'm sure you probably read these books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is one of them by Robert Kiyosaki. Yes. And the other one was Multiple Streams of Income by Robert Allen. I will look into that one. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, both of these books mentioned tax lien investing. I had no idea what it was back then. I didn't know anything. So I don't have a financial background. I don't have a real estate background. And I want to learn about this tax lien investing. And now there are a bunch of books. I have one on Amazon um, that uh, was a best-selling book on a- Amazon. But that's great. But back then, there there weren't there was one book in print, and it was already fifteen years old. <laughs> and, and outdated. That's outdated because the problem with tax lien. And correct me if I'm wrong, right, John? I mean. A lot of things are changing. I mean, the real estate uh, industry has changed, you know, a lot. So doesn't tax liens also change somehow when it comes to... Not as fast as the real estate industry, okay. but, it, but laws change. And the t- tax lien um, industry is regulated by local laws, by state laws, by, um, you know, state statutes, and also by... Uh, whatever the tax collector or county treasurer wants to do. <laughs> so sometimes it, yeah. So sometimes there could be a law that says something happens or can happen, but it's really up to the county treasurer or tax collector who's ever responsible for the tax sale or collecting delinquent taxes. It's really up to them. Yeah, so things can change. Change. Things can change. Um, there are some states that used to be used to sell tax liens, and now they don't. They sell tax deeds instead. Like Oklahoma, years ago, was a tax lien state. Now it's a tax deed state. So yeah, things can change. They don't change very fast, though, because most laws it takes um, you know it takes a lot to yeah. put a new law in the books or change yeah. a law. Very interesting. So I and I think and I'm glad that you share your, your story with us, by the way, because um, it really um, resembles a lot of other people out there that've been through the same thing, including myself. I I still um, I did invest in the stock market, and uh, back in 2000 and between seven and eight, mm-hmm, right? We know what happened at uh, the big crash, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I was like the regular, you know. Um, type of taxpayer out there at that time, I was already an accountant, but, uh, uh, you know, I was working for someone else. Um, and, um, my hope and dreams were vanish, uh, within just a few days. And, uh, I, I lost a lot of money that actually, I never really recoup. That is the bottom line, you know? And, uh, and I remember rolling over my 401k and putting money in and hoping that things would turn around and, just sometimes the market doesn't work that way. It's not in your favor. Um, so knowing that you've done options, I never did. I just went through my 401k and invested in mutual funds, which, by the way, I never have done. And I know some people still do, and I'm happy for them. Um, I don't believe in mutual funds. I have many reasons for it, and that will be a separate uh, episode. And I will, I, I'm very upfront and very honest in my opinion. 
and uh, not everyone's going to agree with me, and that's perfectly fine too. Um, but I don't think it's a good vehicle. I think we need more stability, and we need something more um, possible, if possible, tangible, you know, that we can have. And one of the things I think I enjoy about the type of investments that you make um, is the fact that some of these could turn out to really always buying a house in a very cheap, you know, price. Um, so will you mind sharing with us, how do you feel that somebody who's just getting to start in, you know, investing, uh, what would you recommend tax lien versus to deeds? Uh, what would you suggest? Like how, how do you feel comfortable when you started? What do you think is the, the first thing that you might recommend, you know, someone who is not a, a risk taker? <laughs> Great question. Great question. And I agree with you totally on mutual funds because I also lost a lot of money on mutual funds too. Before that, even before we even sold our house. Um, so yeah, I won't go there now. Cause like you said, that's a whole nother conversation. I totally agree. Uh, but what um, tax liens or tax deeds, where should you start? And it, it, that brings up a very good point too, because a lot of people will will tell you that you could buy tax liens and wind up with the property. And you know there used to be these late night infomercials. So, oh, so and so bought this forty dollar tax lien and wound up with this one hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Wow. It, it doesn't work <laughs> like that. No, it doesn't. it doesn't work like that. And honesty is it's important to share with the audience, you know, because we want them to make the right decisions, right? Um, but I think that is true. You hear that even now, you still hear some of those speaking that way, saying, hey, if you're getting to lean, you know, you might turn out to having all these houses for, you know, a few dollars, you know. Occasionally you do get the house, but you're not going to only pay a few dollars. You're not going to pay a couple hundred dollars and then get a hundred thousand dollar house. Um, think about what your taxes are a year. Okay, now you're in Florida, right? So right. your taxes are lower in Florida than they are here. I'm in Pennsylvania. Oh. And if I go to New Jersey, they're going to be even higher. Okay. Yes, are. But here, here in Pennsylvania, around $5,000 a year is typical to pay in taxes. That, that's New Jersey, much. you're talking higher like maybe $10,000 a year in some places My God. Um, between five and 10 down in Florida. I think you guys think $3,000 is a lot <laughs> a year. So, you know, every state is a little bit different, but I don't know too many states where you only pay $200 a year <laughs> in taxes. No. And, and plus here's the... Have, plus, I'm sorry to draw, remember, we have here, like Texas also, they have the homestead. Um, so we get also that cap, which is now more than 3%, that can increase the taxes. And yeah, that, most states home. do. Most states do have a homestead exemption where you get your taxes lower. I have a homestead exemption, but guess what? I still pay about $5,000 a year. Yeah, right? that's why I'm like, wow, that doesn't sound yeah. like an exception to me. <laughs> um, but unless you have like a, a major um, correction in your taxes, uh, what's a major correction in your taxes? There's uh, some states will offer farm assessments. If you have a farm assessment, that will really lower your taxes a lot. But, you know, most homes, it, it, just if a one year of taxes is a few thousand dollars, yeah. right? Most homes, at least a couple thousand dollars. It is. Okay, most decent homes. Uh, there are states where it's lower than that, but the homes are smaller. Um, and those are areas where not everybody wants to live, let's say, you know. You mean so like anyway, in the, the ones that they're called ghetto or something like that, <laughs> war zones. <laughs> well, yeah, there are those, there are those, and those will be lower taxes. Yes. But my point is that you don't just buy a lien and get the property. Right. There's always a redemption period, and it can be anywhere between six months to three years. Oh. Okay. okay. Now, and most states are going to have at least a year redemption period. Uh, in New Jersey, where I do a lot of my investing, and in Florida, it's a two-year redemption period on liens. So when that two years is over in Florida, you have to pay all the other outstanding taxes. So you bought a lien two years ago, 
right? Let's say it was a two thousand dollar lean in tax. Give us an example, yeah. You don't mind. You don't yeah, mind in that. Florida, I think that's typical. You buy a two thousand dollar lien. Well, two years later, you're ready to um, do a tax deed application, which is what you have to do in Florida. You don't just foreclose like you do in other states. You apply for that lien to go into a deed sale, and then you have to pay all the outstanding taxes. All right. Now you're going to get interest on that if it redeems during this time. And if it doesn't redeem, it goes to the sale and is, um, is sold. You, then it will read, it will redeem at the sale and you'll get paid interest at 18% on all that, um, in Florida. But, uh, but, but if it, um, if it, and if it doesn't sell at that deed sale, you can actually get the property. But how much do you really have invested? It's not that two thousand dollars. Remember, you had to buy, you had to pay another two years of taxes and the tax deed application. So it's a few thousand dollars. That's right. But yeah. you still, if you do get the property, it's still for a lot less than the property is worth. If you do your homework and make sure that when you buy the lien, right? Because guess why people don't pay their taxes. Any guesses? Why why would somebody not just stop paying their taxes? Well, I think one of the things if you I mean of death. If you die, there's no taxes. I mean people can Well, yes, taxes. that's something that could happen. And then and then maybe the heirs don't want the property. Financial right? hardship. I think that's the most thing that people unfortunately and things that you don't you don't sometimes you just don't foresee. I mean things can happen. You stay without a job, like you said it happened, you know, uh, to to your husband, right? I mean circumstances of life and it's not that people do it intentionally it just happens well there's a lot of reasons but there's one reason that nobody talks about and that's that i'm not paying taxes on that property anymore i can't do anything with it <gasps> ah. why do i have to keep paying taxes i don't want it anymore because it's a valueless piece of property while well, all those junk properties go in the tax sale. So you have to do your due diligence and make sure you're buying a, you know, a decent property. Um, you know, some people don't think of that and they just think that everything's going to be profitable. But there's this little disclaimer that they always read at these tax sales. <laughs> or if you're doing an online sale, they always tell you online. They don't even guarantee that property exists. <laughs> it's up to you to do the research to make oh. sure. Yeah, they don't guarantee because, you know, with um, uh, municipalities and counties, um, they go out and they do surveys. Well, right. they could, they make mistakes. Sure, we'll do. You know, they make mistakes. Yes. So, um, so you have to do your due diligence and, and, and make sure of that. Wow, excellent. And so, so anyway, getting back to your question, of what's a good way to start deeds or liens well when you're buying a deed like if you go to a deed sale in florida because florida is one of those states that has both lien sales and deed sales a hybrid right they call it a hybrid no it's not a hybrid state a hybrid state is one that has redeemable deeds like texas that's a different story <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation um, yeah uh florida does both because when the lien buyers, um, after they have a lien for two years, instead of foreclosing, they apply for it to go into a deed sale. So there's a continual feed of liens going into these deed sales in Florida. So you have both liens and deeds. Now in other states, they don't do that. They sell um, one or the other. And even if in deed states, each county will only have one sale a year, and they'll have this big sale a year. So the, th the thing about Florida, and it could be a good thing on, uh, in one respect and a bad thing in another. It's a good thing because there's sales all the time, but it's a bad thing because there's not a lot in each sale because it doesn't just happen one time a year. Right. And some counties will have these sales as often as once a week. Once a week? Wow. Some of the bigger cool. counties with bigger cities will have sales quite often. Wow, that is incredible. So that's yeah. such a great explanation, and I really appreciate it, John, because, again, I think there's a lot of confusion. And I think that people that might share similar background like us, that we've been in the stock market, we invested our hard-earned money, and unfortunately, we lost most of our money there. 
um, we need to find other ways, other alternatives of investing. And I, I, I am with you that I think that anything that is attached to real estate, um, it's a good way of investing. And uh, you know, it's interesting to know the difference between lean and deeds because I think there's still a lot of confusion with that. And, uh, and I think you really made it very clear about that. Um, is there any specific amount that you believe that it's needed, I mean, to get started? Another really great question because um, if you're deciding on whether to buy liens or deeds, one of the things that you have to look at is how much money you have to invest. Because remember, you could buy the lien for a couple thousand dollars. But if you go to the deed sale to buy the deed, you need a lot more than that. In Florida, for example, you're going to need, you know, let's say it's uh, taxes are 2000 a year. You're going to need at least 6000 to buy a decent home. Now, if you want to buy land, you could find it a lot cheaper, right? The, the taxes on land might be, what, $500 a year, so maybe $150. Um, maybe uh, uh, $1,500, it would be the opening bid for a nice piece of land, all right? And then it would get bid up at the sale. But you can get land for lower amounts of money. But if you're really wanting to buy a home at a tax deed sale, then you're going to need a few thousand dollars. Hey, Joanne, so you were saying about what would be the right type of amount of investment, and you were saying, the deeds require a little bit larger amount, which makes sense, uh, because in this case, in, in this case, is it because you're already buying or you have more legal rights over that deed versus to a lien? Can, can you explain? Well, you're, you're actually buying the property. When you buy a deed, you're actually buying the property. It now, does. there are some states, like we mentioned Texas before, right. where you're buying the property, but the owner still has a, a period of redemption. All right, they call that a redeemable deed. But even in those states, it's the price of the property that gets bid up at the sale. So that's why you need a lot more money in the, both the, the, especially in the deed states and also in the redeemable deed states. In the deed states, most of those states, I would say you need about $50,000 at least. And then in the redeemable deed states, maybe um, 25. Well, Texas, I think you need 50, at least 50 in Texas. Uh, some of the others, um, maybe 25,000 to start. And in lean states, yeah, you could start with $2,000. You could start with less than that. But of course, the more you invest, the more you're going to make because you're making a percentage with liens, you're making a percentage of what you invest. That makes sense. That yeah. really does make sense. Um, and, and you've been very generous about sharing so much detail into all this, because again, I think there's a lot of confusion and I believe that people really do want to invest. It's just sometimes they don't feel comfortable. And, uh, and again, we work so hard for our money that, you know, the last thing we want to do is lose money. And again, people like you and I, we've been through our past where we lost, and, and I'm sure people who are listening to this, they've been, you know, in our shoes before too. Um, but I think it's phenomenal. I think it's, we always have to invest and always look at the ROI, right? Yeah, and, I, uh, I always believe in investing in what you know. So you if have, this is something that you, you want to do, educate yourself. About you have it. to educate. So Joanne, um, please uh, share with the audience uh, your contact information and, and, and what kind of seminars you're doing. If there's still something coming up or uh, about your book, by the way, I think your book is phenomenal. Um, I have read part of the book. I haven't finished it, so I'm, I'm honest enough to say so. But so far, what I read, it's just been amazing information. Um, so what... Um, how can people contact you? Because if they really want to learn about this, and I always tell people, invest in your education. Really, it's so important because uh, the last thing you want to do is waste your money doing buying, like you said, things that are probably worthless, and they don't realize that. They might think, oh, this is a great deal, $500, they jump in, they buy, and next thing they know, maybe, I don't know, it's a little tiny lot next to a railroad track. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I, I have people that contact me me that have done that and then they want to sell their liens and I have to go back to them and say, well, nobody's going to buy this. 
<laughs> you know, oh, I don't know, maybe it's what they call a wetland, <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, that's another thing that you have to watch out for. Especially here in Florida and certain states, mm -hmm. you have to be really careful about it. And then I'm going to tell you, oh, by the way, did you know you buy a wetland? <laughs> well, in Florida, the other thing that you have to look out for are sinkholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we have plenty of those, by the way. And you know, every state has its own problems. Yes. And, and um, we also have uh, wetlands up here, in, uh, up in the Northeast. Um, and one of the things that you have to watch for in areas that don't, even in the desert, that don't have wetlands, uh, water rights. If you don't have water, you live out in Arizona in the desert or some areas in California, you live out in the desert and you don't have water rights, you can't really do anything with that land. So, you know, there's, there's different things in different states that you have to, and then in Pennsylvania where I am and in Colorado in some states where there's mountains or mountainous regions, you have to worry about the grade of the property because if you're going to build a house on um on a, a steep grade you have to put a specific t type of um sewage system a, a septic system in that costs a lot of money so that can really prohibit a builder from wanting to buy or anybody from wanting to buy that unless they have a lot of money to put um a very expensive septic system in there and by the way, uh, before I let you go, and you need to give us the contact information, please, because I know some of you are listening to this and say, okay, great, <laughs> Joanna, it sounds great, but how do I contact you? <laughs> uh, okay, well, my website is taxleanlady.com. And um, I just had that name uh, registered, by the way. Now it's a registered trademark. Uh, and my blog is taxleaninvestingtips.com. Okay. I'm also on Facebook. Um, you'll find, you know, if you look for Tax Lean Lady, you'll find me on Facebook. Um, and uh, my uh, email address is info at taxleanlady.com. So easy to, easy to find me. Excellent. John, it's been a true pleasure. And, you know, I, again, I know you, you have a very busy schedule and you have made the time uh, to be here with us. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And, uh, and definitely audience, you're listening, you're watching through my YouTube channel. Uh, reach out to Joanne uh, if you're serious about investing in tax liens or even deeds, like she mentioned, there's a big difference between the two, right? Uh, so you might want to replay this over and over to understand a little more. Um, you know, have the right support. And I will say this, um, because when you lack knowledge, you make a lot of mistakes. And there's nothing greater than when we're able to build, uh, you know, uh, connections with people that really have been there before us. So, Joanne, once again, thank you so much. And, uh, and I hope we stay in touch, that's for sure. Any other, you know, end message that you want to give to the audience or anything else? Well, thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. And I also do have a YouTube channel. Oh, <laughs> you boy, see, there you go. Yes. Tax Lean Lady on YouTube. You know, you can just search Tax Lean Lady and you'll find me on YouTube. Excellent. Because um, believe it or not, there's some people who are YouTubers. They call them like that. Yeah. They have a name. Yeah. And uh, they love watching videos. Some people, you know, like more audio. Others like to watch. I'm both, by the way. And I also like reading. That's just me. Uh, but I know some, the new generation, millennial generation, they like more watching videos. That's what they're into. Uh, but again, this is something that they don't have to watch. You can just listen to it. So, if they, you know, they're in the gym, walking around, whatever it is, they can still learn, right? So, Joanne, once again, thank you for your time. And like I said, I hope we stay, you know, uh, connected. And, uh, and I wish you a lot of success in your business. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Liz. It was great being here.